Uh, hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to this Kamunda tutorial and uh, in the previous couple of videos we have already seen how to work with Kamunda, how to deploy the diagram uh, using Kamunda modeler, right? You were writing a diagram here, you were creating a diagram and then like create a BPM and diagram, we were creating a basic simple uh, diagrams and we were actually deploying these diagrams to to, to our PPMN. So there is a Kamunda engine already running. So what we are doing is, let's say this is a test task and we were able to deploy this to our Kamunda engine. So what we were doing is just click save it on the desktop, test.bpmn and we were deploying it. So this is where my Kamunda engine is running and I was deploying it in deployment field this expression is mandatory so what we will do is let's say we are saying this is an external and we will put a topic name test save it and then deploy it again deployment succeeded okay so we have seen the couple of examples how these external task service task call activity now what we are going to do is let's talk about all these possible options that you can create a receive task, send task, user task, business tool task, DMN tables, call activity or sub process. Right? You can also create a sub process here. Uh, you can actually navigate, you can actually segregate the responsibility to uh, another BPML. Let's say here you have a service task, and after this, what do you have is you wanted to have a call activity, and this is done. So here you can change it to a sub process call activity or let's say sub process. So, this is your sub process, and now this sub process you will be defining. So, after doing this service task, it will be navigating to the sub process. Sub process can be another BPMN having all the different steps. So, this is to reduce the complexity because you can't write everything inside a single BPMN, single workflow. Similarly, you can create a call activity, you can create a sub process, all these things. You can also execute, like say, uh, I am doing it as a call activity. And here, I can decide if this is going to be the parallel or it is going to be the sequential execution. Okay, and we are able to deploy these things. Now, what we are going to see is uh, we are going to look at the, the BPM and elements because those are uh, important to understand. Because these are the activities we are using in the BPM, like tasks, sub process, call activity. Uh, and we can see this particular table which talks about things in the detail. We might have used a lot of these, like message start event, message end event, timer. Timer is something you wanted to execute iteratively, like you wanted to send a notifications in every five minutes until unless that process is executed, right? So we can talk about this timer thing. Here, instead of doing this, you can start a timer start event, right? So this timer event, will you will put a timer, retry time cycle. Uh, you, need, you will be configuring it as a five minute, 10 minute. So in every five minute, it will execute this whole cycle automatically, right? So these are timer events. You can change it to the other events like start event, which is by default, but you can do a message start event, single start event, and uh, the timer events, which we already have. Now let's see all these things. So let's go, this is the message event, message start, message end event, then timer events we have. A lot of timer events, conditionals, and then we have like uh, multiple parallels and the important thing is these gateways because we will not be using all these BPM and symbols in our BPM and workflow but most commonly used I will say the message start event, message end event, start event, end event and then you have these gateways uh, where are these so gateways where you can put a condition okay go to this particular direction go to this particular direction and uh, you have parallel gateways. So 
so if we just talk about these things uh, i will go to the simple ones first the task right so task we can define as a service task service tasks are those done by external software okay these will be done by uh, business rules so we define a business rules based on this it is decided this is a user task so user has to manually go to the bpmn workflow and have to complete this task these, these user tasks can be completed through an external call also because this can be completed through external api call then loop right so let's say the here you can create do a timer event and this timer event will execute this after a particular second this is kind of a loop right uh, you can set timer set timer every 5 minute it will execute you can create a multiple instance like this uh, this is a parallel event and a sequential event so after 5 minute this will execute for 10 different iterations right this is a parallel like choose pizza for a different people in your house and then order pizza for one by one you, it will create a multiple instance then compensations and how to reduce the complexity you can create a sub process that is called call activity so we can see these things so uh, here we are creating a sub process this is a service task the implementation can be external java class expression most of the time we do it as a external and we define the topic for it this is sub process then we asynchronous after and you define the time durations and cycle for it okay now let's see what all things we have here yeah so the end events these are called end events these are called start event these are called service tasks i mean task events so these are the possible task events here we can have sub process script manual user task and all these are categorizations this is a start event this is the end event the possible end events we can have message end event uh, signal end event termination end event and all and if we look into the documentation then there are many you can actually create this uh, sub process and can execute these sequence in parallel and uh, in a sequentially here you can also add these gateways so if we just take a look what all different type of gateway we have and if you click on to this and here you see parallel gateway inclusive complex and event based gateway most of the time we just execute this default gateway what it does is it will execute these based on the conditionals okay you can put a condition as an expression it will execute this based on this expression okay and here you can attach another process which can be uh, your service task and that will be completed like this okay here this can be changed to a parallel gateway here you can make it parallel gateway what does this mean is these are executing parallelly these are not conditionals okay we are, it is not allow, asking you to pass the expression as a condition you see because this is the parallel gateway let me just delete this so what it is saying is here i can put a gateway and I can simply say as the connector and closing event and you can close it independently also so here you can attach uh, multiple parallel events like here I have one more this can be my different kind of task let's say I'm adding a service task so this is task 1 this is task 2 so these are happening in the parallel sequence there can be another thing like you can add a gateway here and then it will decide based on the expression here okay this i'm going to execute based on this expression otherwise i will go and execute something else let me scratch it down okay here you can see so these are expression based that means based on a particular conditional expression this will execute okay let's say what we are saying is there is a test variable if test equal equal to hello then it will execute this sequence 
twice this will execute hello one this can be your any kind of event service task business task and all can be a call activity can be a sub process So these are independent. Here it will decide okay where in which direction we are going based on the expression value, and then it will execute these parallelly, and then it will finish up these events. So these are parallel. These two are sequential. This is exclusive OR, and this is the default gateway. And this is a parallel gateway. Similarly, you have exclusive gateway, event-based gateway, complex gateway, and all. So all these things we can understand from the documentation. What all these things are? Call activity, ad hoc. I mean, if we talk about the BPM and two dot two, there are many. Even I'm not also familiar with each and everything. Here you can see this is the default. Uh, this is the default gateway. So based on the condition, it is going to execute it, right? Choose recipe. You want to eat pasta or you want to eat a different dish, and then based on it will do this. But sometimes you want like there is an example. I think here prepare salad. No matter what you are eating, prepared salad is something which you are going to eat by default. So what we can do to optimize it, we can put this prepared salad in the parallel, and then this is in the uh, default gateway. So prepared salad, no matter what you are eating, salad will always be there. So put it in the parallel format, and then you decide okay you wanted to eat this or that, right? So in that case, you actually optimize this whole flow, and it is now being done in the less Duration here it was taking like let's say three plus ten thirteen plus uh, fifteen plus ten these many duration here after putting this eat salad or prepare salad task in the parallel it is now being done I mean the last duration because we have introduced the parallel gateway right so this is how we can uh, improve our things then there are inclusive gateways and all so that we can take a look. Okay, now next thing what we are planning to do, I mean we can use these fancy gateways, add the additional complexity. We can use the timer events and all. Okay, now what we are going to achieve with the whole things, we can easily deploy these things. We have already discussed about the message start and message end event, like from one particular BPM and how we are executing the multiple based on the conditions. So uh, that's it. Let's talk a little bit more about the BPMs and uh, how we can deploy them and how we can actually use these with the microservices. That is very important topic. I mean, creating these BPMs, there are already a lot of BPM and tools. Kamunda is something which is open source and very much popular in the microservices world. But BPM and are not something which are new. But Kamunda is something with the with something different and it is open source and has a lot of things to give. When you are writing the architecture with a lot of microservices and all, 